Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. Uh, I love this particular topic that we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking all about marketing from an email marketing standpoint. And with that, I've got Andre Boychuk, and he's the CEO of Flow Flowium, and it's a leading e-commerce e-marketing platform. He's a strategist, and we're going to talk all about growth and um, how to scale your business using digital email marketing. So, Andre, welcome. Uh, hi, Christopher. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, I know, um, you know, we connected through Podmatch and tell people how you got started and, you know, we'll get into the nuts and details of the show. Sure. So I started back in 2000s, early 2017. Late 2016, I quit my corporate job and I didn't know what to what to do. And I had um, some experience in email marketing from my side hustle. I was building websites and doing email marketing for myself. And when I quit my job, I uh, my full time job, I didn't know what to do. So I start um, like exploring different options. I didn't want to work for somebody else at that moment. So I found this platform Upwork. And I start kind of freelancing, taking jobs, uh, like taking different projects, like uh, small, big, uh, I didn't care. Just the volume for me was the most important. And I, after months on this platform, I realized that people pay more money for email marketing than any other services. And there's not much competition. So I kind of, this is how I kind of narrow my focus on email marketing and the rest is like yeah. history <laughs> yeah yeah i love that and i love um so kind of talk about um you know from uh, the od audience standpoint why business owners should think about or consider email marketing sure uh so email marketing it's one of the marketing channels where you own the data you own that email and you are able to communicate with your prospect or customers as often as you want of course you you will not send them probably 50 emails per day uh, but you can do you can do that communication on your own terms so no other platform like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok will change some kind of algorithm and people will not see your post. Here, you own that email and you can do the manual outreach. You can type in the email and send it out, or you can do the mass uh, or which is called email marketing, where you craft the message and send it to your entire list. Well, the way I love it is because, um, <clears throat> you know, this podcast, it's very, when listeners and subscribers, they come it's very intimate. It's almost like you're in a, like a space and email is like this email newsletter or it's like more intimate and kind of like SMS, you know, versus like the big platforms, you know, it's just basically widespread, you know, shoot and pray. Yeah. Uh, so kind of talk about what is interesting is um, I love talking or learning about strategies and trends with email marketing, especially in this day of an age of AI now. So in terms of AI, there's not much that I can. Uh, the, there's not much change that I um, like. I, I see so far. Some people use AI for copywriting, uh, like to create uh, create some subject lines, create some uh, copy uh, for the, the the email itself, and some um, tools, uh, some email marketing platform ESPs. They have built in AI in this um, in their email builders. But it's not something like innovative. It's like, listen, you can use ChatGPT, create subject lines and put it in. What I like, I like is some AI features where they predict something. They predict your behavior, like predict your next purchase or they predict what you're going to do next. That AI, I like, like it's like more like machine learning. Uh, but uh, for that AI uh, or machine learning to work uh, better, you need to feed more information. So if somebody purchased only once from your store or become your customer only paid you once, the, there is not much data for AI to learn. But if the second time or third time or fifth time buyer, it's easier to predict their next purchase. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, and uh, we'll get into email trends, but um, one thing I want to ask you is um so you mentioned a higher roi when you use email marketing in, in terms of just conversion rate but um how is this uh like 
compare and contrast with social media, like versus like the reach and also the conversion and the open rates and all of that? Uh, so it's different. I mean, there's no, uh, there's no, no metric like a reach because it's not you're not showing to the masses and like how many people you reach. Uh, you have uh, X number of email contacts and let's say. 1000 when you send it to 1000 people the average open rate is between like 20 percent and can be as high as 50 percent for 1000 email subscribers so this is your reach kind of 50 percent of 50 percent of your list will open that emails uh, but uh, it will be delivered to 100 percent of your list um the, the the challenge here is deliverability because this is a fundamental of email marketing uh, how good uh, your deliverability score, how good your email getting to the inboxes versus spam folder or promo folder. So there's a lot of like technical things you have to do on the back end to make sure uh, inbox providers like Gmail, Yahoo, and other do not consider you you as a spammer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's interesting because um, you know with social media, it's kind of just like um, basically big reach, but you you know conversion may be very small. But then like um, you know a lot of people use social media to as a funnel into their email list, and then the email list is more you know dedicated, committed, and your conversion rates are a lot higher. Um, of course, yeah. Yes, so. I'm not familiar with a social media conversion rate, but. From web visitor to email subscriber, the four percent, four four to five percent conversion rate from e web visitor to email subscriber is considered the good uh, kind of opt-in rate or conversion rate into email subscribers. And then from email subscriber to a buyer, I, I don't have the generic numbers, but for example, for automatic automatic email or behavior trigger email, like two percent. 3% or like from 1% to 3%, it's a good conversion rate, uh, but in e-commerce space. But if we're talking about campaigns, those email blasts or campaigns broadcast, it's a point like half a percent or even like smaller, consider like, okay, uh, conversion rate because you're sending them more often and they are not as personalized as the behavior trigger emails. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um, so what are some uh, trends in uh, email marketing? So th the latest one that on top of my mind, um, Yahoo and Gmail uh, changing uh, the rules like currently. And in in December next month, uh, Gmail will be deleting all inactive users who did not use Gmail in the last two years. And uh -huh. it will affect people's deliverability that if they do not clean up their databases, if they do not do the less hygiene and the <laughs> hypothesis and the rumors that those all emails will be converted to like spam traps. If you're still sending them uh, to those emails, if you're sending them, it's a, it's a sign to Gmail that like you're a spammer because you should not send to, to, to those people. Uh, so this is kind of the big uh, industry shift. And um, earlier this year, another was big trend and big shift was to set up dedicating sending domain. Uh, uh -huh. So when you use email marketing tool, when you send uh, email, uh, from your brand, let's say like our brand is Flowium, it's like sent from Flowium and it's like via and Mailchimp, blah blah blah, or Active Campaign, blah blah blah. Some like like weird weird domain, but uh, so you are using shared domain, and you need to set it up in your domain hosting uh, some records to make sure you are using your domain to send out those emails and not some shared one, because shared one right now will be will be treated as a kind of spammers now oh interesting yeah it's quite interesting uh yeah email and spam and you know i'm always getting you know kind of spam and um and always you know unsubscribing so, you know what you probably don't get even five percent was going your way uh, <laughs> and even like the spam folder doesn't even like your spam folder even doesn't get like probably 90 or more percent of what's actually going your way yeah. But Gmail, Yahoo, and other providers, they're doing a great job to blocking those 
emails, even like entering your inbox, even spam folder. I know it's annoying when you're <laughs> when you send out emails and it end up in spam. Yeah. But in general, those spam filters are good for users. So for example, if you know either you know your email hosting site or whatnot, like and um, if you block senders, does that negatively impact those those addresses and you know does it get recognized as that's like a spammer um that sort of thing yes so there's there's special uh, companies there's like different like how, how should they call like spam houses like people like uh, where if you <laughs> if they blacklist you you can be blacklisted on one side but not blacklisted on another side but it's very important not to be blacklisted at all but yeah. if you are blacklisted there's uh things you need to do to to mo- to make sure like uh to get your reputations like in a good position it takes time deliverability is not something that is like happens overnight so it goes both ways when you do something wrong you don't see it like immediately it's like you ruin your sender's reputation like over a long period of time the same thing uh, like to get it better you need like uh, to do it a good time for a very long time to get it better it's like very similar to credit credit score you know like it's not something yeah. like you do it once and your credit course like drop 200 points actually you can theoretically do that but it's not something it's typically something over a period of time you like opening different credit cards you're loading credit cards with a lot of money and your like credit score goes down same thing to improve it you need to start paying those bill on time uh, yeah. reduce your um, balances and this is how your credit score will grow same thing with the sender reputation Interesting. Yeah. And kind of talk about, we'll kind of shift gears, but uh, talk about uh, starting and running a premium service marketing agency. So when I started back in 2017, I did not know even this business model agency thing. Uh, I was just kind of hustling, making money, ma- making money to survive. At that moment, I lived in New York. I, I still live in New York. Uh, I had my first daughter and like wife, and I need to support my family. So I didn't care about agency, not agency, premium, not premium. Like I just need to make money. Uh, <laughs> but then when I start to get traction, like when I start to focus uh, only on e-commerce clients, um, I mean, we serve all kinds of clients, but at that moment I was focusing only on e-commerce and people just start to refer to me, other people. And, I was managing myself close to like 24 clients and it was crazy. I mean, money was there. Like I like the money, but uh, it, I didn't have time to spend those money. And um, I knew one guy uh, who had the agency already. And I like, listen, I'll pay you money. Can you teach me how you organize your company, how you hire people? So over a period of three months, he taught me how to do it. And then I learned about the agency model, uh, the business model, how it works, what kind of people I need to hire, how to do business, how to price. I become less, much less profitable because I ha- had to hire people, uh, but my stress level went down as well. Like I was not as stressed as it used to be. And yeah, and over the years, we, we grew a lot uh, during uh, COVID. I mean, all e-commerce businesses grew a lot during two t- COVID period yeah and this yeah. is my story <laughs> yeah it's interesting it's interesting uh, your story describing is um kind of like uh you know i'm a hustler too so you know always looking for opportunities and um but then when you kind of consolidate and like create a brand and you focus um you know create an agency model which is interesting i never heard of that um, term but um then you talk about um, this uh, scaling an e-commerce business with email marketing. Tell, tell us more about that aspect. Sure. So when, when somebody starts e-commerce business or any kind of business, the most important thing is, is to get leads, to get clients, to get money, to get revenue. Like, like, um, like revenue, like cash is uh, something that fuels the business. Uh, yeah. So this is kind of the step number one. But when e-commerce uh, businesses uh, reach certain point, they start to realize, listen, we are like hamster wheel. Like we getting new clients, we getting new clients, we getting new clients. And it's just like, um, how can we scale? And this is the next 
a phase in retail and e-commerce uh, mm -hmm. space is a retention. So even if you sell something closing, closing or like beauty and cosmetic, it's not only about like those subscription models, but when you sell just one use, one time use product, it doesn't mean that you cannot sell more to the same clients. And this is where email marketing is very good. It's a part of retention marketing. So our goal was email marketing to sell more to those people and to increase their lifetime value. So they not to convert those one-time buyers to two-time buyers to three-time buyers and so forth. Um, because only in general, the good rule of thumb, only 20% of from first-time buyers are converted to second time buyers and in some brand uh, the, the the percentage even is much, much smaller so that when brands starting up they are focusing a lot on acquisition but if they want to sc scale up they need to start focusing on retention as well retention of their customers yeah yeah i love that um you kind of as we kind of end to the come to the end of the show and the talk which i really enjoyed was this um you talk about you know you quit your corporate job and talk about you know taking that leap entrepreneurial mindset and setting winning goals christopher so what, what are like uh, what is the question i didn't get it uh you know describe this idea where you uh you know you took a leap of faith you quit your job you went all in on your business and uh you know decided to grow and scale your 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 business and your company sure like right now, like looking back, it like it wasn't as hard. But remember, if I remember how was it, it was extremely. It took me like a few years, probably two years, to quit my job. Like I yeah. always wanted, <laughs> but it took me two years. And when I quit it, you know, like you're listening to all those podcasts or YouTube channels, people are saying, "Don't worry, money will come. You just need to do what you love, or like you need to <laughs> hustle, and money will come." And you're like, "Yeah, I hear you, but money is not coming." And at that moment, I was thinking that I did not kind of believe in myself, uh, but I pushed it through. I mean, one thing that helped me a lot, I was just consistent doing the work, doing the work, doing the work. And I was not afraid to take small project for $50 here, uh, for 70 project, like a project there, for 500 here, 200 there. So it, I, I, I didn't care much about, at the beginning, didn't care much about the amount of money. But I care about my kind of reputation, built up my reputation re to mm -hmm. get reviews for the clients so this is how how it all started yeah yeah i love that how can people contact you follow you reach out to you check out your social media check out your work sure i mean the best way is go to our website uh, it's flowium f-l-o-w-i-u-m dot com and you can get access to all our information and contact us and also i'm a very active on linkedin my first and last name yeah and for all the audience out there listening, Andre, for coming on, um, really kind of elucidating email marketing. It's really interesting. It's, it's age old, but just just you you know when you get a feeling something in your email inbox. All of his resources will be in the links and show notes. And with that, thanks so much for coming onto the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me.